Thank you very much, Joel. And uh, you know, as I get started, one I want to just have a round of applause for Joel and my team for all those involved with uh, organizing this event. It's just a fantastic venue to highlight some of the emerging technologies that are of interest and uh, help you know raise awareness for some of these opportunities. So really appreciate that. Um, I recognize it's a uh, you know. Folks are coming from a variety of backgrounds and thought it might be helpful. Just a quick show of hands, how many of you are coming from industry? So it's probably understood. Okay, about a third. How many of you are coming from perhaps uh, in terms of educational organization? Okay. And um, those of you who are students? Any students? And, uh, um, and I guess economic development would be the last area. So, so again, we have a broad spectrum here, which is great. Uh, again, speaks to the, the interest in um, interest in this topic. Uh, the um, so just you know, just a quick overview, and, and I should say that we're. I know there's a lot of information coming at you today. The, the goal for this presentation really is to. Um, is to provide a you know further update and some some clear sense of, of the progress, um, and then really drive to go towards the Q and A at the end, uh, an opportunity to, uh, to interact and, and address some questions here as we come forward. If you have if you have one takeaway from this presentation, I hope I would just thank you to, to stick with this. We are creating an unfair advantage by virtue of a business being located in this region. The access to the lift network, the labs for industry futures and transformation, will represent an unfair advantage for your business. But that is what we are doing right now, and I just want you to sort of stick with that because um, one, it's critical that the engagement of the, of the manufacturing and business community with all the other partners in this um, will be critical for its success. But again, what this represents will be that unfair advantage. Um, the, uh, how many of you were at the initial press announcement in April by any chance? All right, so about a third. They, um, if you were there, you would you'd know that uh, the, the Labs for Industry Futures and Transformation um, is uh, a function of the Lilly, um, the Lilly Endowment that has provided benefaction to the region. But it represents um, really a collaboration of a number of key institutions in the region. Uh, and these are the initial collaborators here in terms of uh, led by the South and Elkhart Regional Partnership and the University of Notre Dame, but in, with strong partnerships here with Ivy Tech, the Elkhart Community Schools, uh, the community foundations from both Elkhart, Marshall, and, and St. Joseph counties, uh, Purdue Polytech, and in Focus, among others. So um, and we have the liftgrant.com. Uh, this is sort of a, an initial place for the website with some, some key high level information. but. Admittedly, if you were to go to this, um, or if you were at that press conference, it's, um, you, you may still be asking, all right, so what is this, right? So help me understand, what is a network? What is a platform? And that's really what we want to do today, is break it down into some, some literal components. Um, if you think about it, you know, the, the most vibrant, successful regions, um, you know, economically in the country, if not further, have, you know, those assets of a, um, uh, certainly a strong uh, you know, industrial base and broadly understood, uh, an entrepreneurial culture, a skilled workforce, and a tier one research university, among other things. Um, we have those components, but arguably, up until this point, they're, sort of dis they're, they're disconnected, right? We have some great assets in the region, but they are not leveraged in a way that there's mutually beneficial and can reinforce them. What Lyft uh, represents is that integration really in a way of thinking about innovation facilities, the applied learning programs, and, and we'll speak to industry advancement services, but it's they're all united in this sort of watering hole, this common platform where they're able to leverage one another and so that we're able to hit all the dimensions here uh, in support of, of uh, industry growth. You know, just just some uh, some key numbers here. The, the $42 million I get from Lilly towards a broader overall um, platform of potentially $170 million of investment over the next five years. Um, you know, big major components of this around uh, 20 million uh, of this will of the uh, of the grant will go towards fil uh, facilities and equipment. Uh, another 14 towards applied learning, apprenticeship, and internship programs. 
uh, the, uh, there's a catalyst fund, uh, which for two and a half million dollars is set up for emerging opportunities that come forward over the next five years, where either a consortium of businesses or um, academic institutions or others identify an emerging trend, say it be you know, blockchain or quantum computing or additive manufacturing, and can bring that forward and get funding for both uh, research and development and training programs uh, you know, tailored to that. Um, and in terms of uh, the activities, again, being coordinated through uh, the South Bend Elkhart Regional Partnership, the University of Notre Dame's Industry Labs, um, with a lot of key support from uh, the InFocus team. At the, at really sort of the operative piece here is, is the industry hub, and I'm gonna dive into that in terms of what that means, um, uh, what that really represents. Um, the, uh, before then, it's important, what does a regional collaboration look at? And we, we've, this is uh, in draft form, but you know, these are things that are um, in conversation there between uh, the partnership and focus, the university of identifying what are, what are just foundational ground rules for this kind of unprecedented collaboration. One, region first. So as we measure and look at any program going forward, it has to demonstrate that it has a broadest benefit across the region, not to any particular organization or community. But this is, we're gonna look at things region first. This is a great opportunity to drive towards a common language across the region, kind of help distill the signal from the noise. Um, certainly transparency and integrity. Um, uh, you know, I love this term I heard from Gary Jalot, who some of you may know, um, progress moves at the speed of trust. And you know, I think that as we bring additional partners together, that's gonna be fundamental for the success of, of the network. Um, openness to new ideas, uh, you know, and, and quite frankly, a challenge to everyone that uh, um, if, it's, if it's happening that way, ask why, if there's not a better way. Be able to point to how anything being proposed represents a best in class um, you know, proposal model nationally as we look to advance this um, and, uh, and, and excellence. So the goodwill and mutual benefit are also fundamental for this. Um, but excellence, again, the pursuit of excellence that we want to create something that is a national model um, and, uh, and, and sort of a path breaker in, in many ways. So the, in terms of the industry advancement services, I, I just think this is a unique uh, element to this. So at the, at the um, uh, in some ways, quarterbacking or at that intersection between the facilities, uh, the applied learning programs, and, and uh, advancement services will be uh, a group of, and we're calling triple ENIRs. So in, uh, either engineers, entrepreneur, executives, and residents. It could be any, any three or all those three. Um, that are those with authority in industry, um, but also understand kind of navigators and translators between um, the, the various resources. They're gonna be, we're developing a sort of diagnostic tool or a wellness uh, assessment, if you will, um, that would, we'd apply to a business and would give them a sense of, um, you know, in some ways it's also how, you know, a private equity firm looks in the acquisition, right? You look at, capital structure, their financial performance, their technology, their markets, are there other market opportunities, are there uh, underutilized commercialization opportunities, is it a talent issue? Looking at that diagnostic and then handing it back to the company, that's of immediate value to the company. Um, but then for us as a region, we get a heat map, we get a sense of where are people grading out, what are the common patterns, what are those challenges that represent? And from the basis of that, um, we can then, there's a logic as to where they plug in in the network. What resources are the best, uh, uh, the best fit for them? So, you know, if you're, you get a personal, you know, health wellness exam and your issue is high blood pressure, then you know that these are the things you need to do to address it, right? Um, it's kind of that way that, that we're looking at this in some ways um, to really help surface the opportunities for the region. Um, and you can imagine that this works with our existing industries but that the, uh, to enable them to really become the, the best 21st versions of themselves, but that also the, tech, the, the, um, the technologies and the solutions that are created in addressing these issues, they then, they then commercialize themselves, which, you know, Simba Chain being a you know, great case study for this, you know, coming through, um, you know, at Tanco, that then helps us diversify economically, right? So we create a new set of companies 
um, you know, between advanced industries that are serving and in solving some of the needs with our existing businesses. So we think this is uh, particularly exciting and um, look forward to, and, and like I said, it'll be critical to have engagement throughout the region. Um, to speak to that and what this means to the region, I'm going to um, hand this over to Regina, um, president of the South and Elkhart Regional Partnership. <laughs> um, the South and Elkhart Region, as you all know, because many of you are engaged with them, has one of the highest concentrations of manufacturing employment in the U.S. And while that's historically a strength, the region's excess, extensive manufacturing base was exposed as a dangerous vulnerability when we went through the Great Recession of 2007 to 2009, um, during which, as you can tell by this slide, um, was reported local employment surpassing 20% and garnering national media attention. A quote back in the 2018 Wall Street Journal article on Elkhart's economy noted that over the last decade, the city has been in a race against the clock to build a more diverse and sustainable economy. Additionally, the Brookings Institution recently ranked the South Bend Elkhart region third in the nation in terms of vulnerability for disruption caused by automation, with nearly 30% of our region in low-skilled, low-wage jobs. We had worked with Techonomy partners who observed that despite the South Bend Elkhart region's strong economic recovery, the fundamental vulnerabilities exposed by the Great Recession remain unchanged. They highlighted a few critical factors, but in general, um, we know that we still have issues that we need to address. So despite those challenges that exist, there are many regional assets, like Scott noted, that provide a strong foundation for the next chapter of economic growth and prosperity in the South Bend Elkhart region. A key catalyst for the economic development of the regional awareness was the Indiana uh, Regional Cities Initiative back in 2015, which sparked a conversation between business, civic, institutional, and academic leaders in Elkhart, St. Joseph, and Marshall counties about common strengths and goals in the region. We worked collaboratively, and our region was successful in being awarded a $42 million grant to focus on quality of life projects. Uh, the South Bend Elkhart Regional Partnership and our volunteers and our team now lead the region stakeholders through the following five focus areas expanded beyond that quality of place. Industry growth, entrepreneurship, education and workforce, talent attraction and retention, and diversity and inclusion. We have committees that undertook a planning process in 2017 and 2018 to come up with a regional economic development strategy authored by Marshall King, who's here with us today. And within that, um, we set the audacious goal for our region to match the national per capita personal income by 2025. That's an increase of 15% and would require regional, our regional economy to expand by 5% annually. To economy, when they were engaged um, upon the completion of our regional economic development strategy to do a deep dive into identifying what are our innovation assets in the region and how could the industries that have strengths here link to those for economic growth. And in that 2018 report, they identified specialized regional industry clusters based on our share of employment in particular industries as compared to the national share of employment, the national average of employment in those industries. There were nine clusters that were identified, which is really unique. Most regions are very centrally focused on one or two clusters, but you can see the nine that were identified where we had a high share of employment compared to the national average. And in all of those clusters, except for motor vehicles, there, our region experienced significant growth in employment compared to the rest of the country between 2010 and 2016. That outpacing of national trends indicates regional strengths in those areas that fall within what we're calling a mobility meta cluster, or a grouping of industries that relate either directly or indirectly to the production of transportation related products and equipment. The mobility meta cluster here in the region includes over 2,000 industry establishments and nearly 90,000 jobs. This concentration of industries represents the region's base and points to our clear strength in making things. Techonomy identified many opportunities um, that you've talked about, one today being additive manufacturing. Okay, go to the next slide. So that's where the lift network comes in. In order for the South and Elkhart region to address our vulnerabilities and build on our regional momentum, the lift network proposes that key stakeholders would collaborate to develop and then execute transformative actions that do four things. Foster the infusion of advanced innovation processes, products, and techniques into the region's advanced manufacturing industries, exactly what we're here talking about today. Number two, catalyzing growth in emerging advanced industry sector, sectors, including IT, data analytics, defense, and aerospace. Number three, leveraging the research strengths, faculty expertise, 
student creativity of the University of Notre Dame and the other regional colleges and universities in our K through 12 academic institutions, and fourth, advancing our systemic workforce development and talent recruitment initiatives aligned with key growth sectors. So you can see that the, um, the Venn diagram there, which Scott uh, introduced earlier, and how it connects through to the strategic plan in those five areas, really with the end goal being those three central ones, prosperity, resilience, and the skilled workforce, in order to support our existing uh, work, uh, companies and businesses, recruit new companies and businesses, and skill up our entire workforce. So I'm going to talk about a couple of the components, um, the first one being the applied learning facilities. So or, let's see. Is it uh, actually, we've got the applied learning um, education program. So that, that component about training and educating the workforce. And we know to succeed with the long-term vision of the LIFT network, it's critical to build the workforce capacity for the technological, analytical, and processing needs of an economy that's capable of responding to trends that are vastly different than those of which the current employment infrastructure was built. The five-year goals of the LIFT network applied learning programs include increasing the availability of work-ready talent in our key industry sectors, increasing the knowledge base and educational attainment levels of residents, increasing talent attracted and retained in the South and Elkhart region, and fostering a culture of ongoing learning and innovation. The proposed applied learning programs within the LIFT network aim to provide experiential learning opportunities that address the current attainment, placement, and advancement barriers. These could include programs like um, apprenticeships in manufacturing, internships and capstone programs where some of the 40,000 students that are enrolled in our college and universities are embedded in the manufacturing companies in our region, learning the current skills and those of the future, um, as well as entrepreneurial education, workforce education, and lifelong learning. So it's a vast array of educational opportunities that we intend to connect into one network Going back to that, not, not one physical hub, but this network of resources that are available to you and your employees. On the next slide, we talk about, we move over to the innovation facility. So these are the capital um, investments. And the goal here is to expand the innovation and technology capabilities of the region through the LIFT network members within the next five years by making strategic capital investments in the physical innovation assets that are needed to achieve our long-term goal for the region. There are five initial investments that are going to be made, and I'll just give a brief overview of those before turning it over to Dr. Fuge. Um, the innovation facilities are intended to reduce the redundancy of effort by forging an ecosystem where members will proactively work together through shared physical and intellectual resources. This shared facility approach will give students and companies a single point of access to state-of-the-art tools for research, development, and design, eliminating the current need for companies to seek R&D services from outside of the state and mitigating the cost for having to purchase, use, and maintain individual equipment at each company. Um, the first of these that we, of the five that I mentioned, is a LIFT network grant that would support development of Ivy Tech Community College's iFlex Lab, adding four new advanced industry-related programs, including electrical engineering, industrial maintenance, mechatronics, and machine tool technology. The second, in the middle here, you can just see a little picture, is expansion of the Elkhart Area Career Center, specifically their School of Engineering Technology and Innovation Regional Career Center, which will support career exploration and training in the skills demanded specifically by local industry and in developing our high school talent for that. The third uh, is, to, is seeking to leverage the platform that's being built within the Renaissance District in downtown South Bend, and that's the Tech Training and Demo Center within Building 113 that includes Purdue Polytechnic Institute, South Bend Code School, and Focus, the Regional Partnership, and other experiential learning uh, programs and partners who have co-located to create a density of entrepreneurship and STEM education programming. Investment in the center will catalyze the expansion of new technology within existing sectors and most importantly will train and educate workers in those particular fields. On the next slide is the last two of the five innovation facilities that we wanted to make you aware of. On this slide, you can see the Community Education Center, which will provide a physical space and linked programming where residents can gain technology and digital literacy skills that are demanded by the modern age. This is part of the $37 million renovation and expansion of the Downtown South Bend Library Branch, which will add 35,000 square feet, house a digital lab, makerspace, a variety of classroom meeting spaces, and other areas. And lastly, located within South Bend's Ignition Park, you have the South Bend Elkhart Technology Resource Center, which represents another outpost of the LIFT network. The five-year goal of the TRC is to equip and reskill the workforce for digital literacy and IT-related goals by offering adult and continuing education courses. Specifically, they're working on developing a data engineer boot camp and analytics apprenticeship program 
that will be offered in um, 12 week cycles and involve employers for specific training and opportunities for engagement. The aspiration of that program and many of these is to provide the South Bend Elkhart region with a highly skilled workforce that will be available and connected to you and your businesses as you work through these disruptive technologies and look to add innovation and grow in those fields. I'm gonna, with this point, turn it over to Dr. Tom Fugay, and he's gonna talk a little bit more about the industry labs component of the Lyft Network, the innovation facilities, and the capacities that will be on campus. Okay, so as Regina said, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Notre Dame part of, of this picture. Uh, we call the Notre Dame uh, part of uh, the Lyft Network industry labs, because the word industry has an ND right next to it, uh, right within it, which we uh, very helpfully capitalized there. And that's, that's what uh, we're talking about when we talk about industry labs. Uh, before I do this, I want to make a larger point. I've been at the University of Notre Dame for about 21 years now. Uh, I came here in 98 from the University of Maryland. And we could not have done anything like this 20 years ago. We couldn't have done this 10 years ago. We probably couldn't have done it five years ago. And the reason for that is because I don't think 20 or 10 or even five years ago, Notre Dame could have really brought much to the table in terms of economic development. We've always been very good at uh, you know, filling hotel rooms and, uh, and filling up restaurants. But if you look at how we have been able to engage uh, with local industry, um, it has tended to be one-offs. And part of that is because we just didn't have the, the, the capacity to do so until really the last 10 years. The last 10 years has seen a big growth in terms of our capability to do that. Uh, if you look, for instance, again, uh, in my college, the College of Engineering has grown. We're 50% we're bigger in terms of faculty than we were 10 years ago. We're 100% bigger in terms of undergraduate students. Um, uh, the, the, the research infrastructure, the labs that we have now at Notre Dame are so much more extensive and of potential use to local industry than was the case 10 or even five years ago. So I want to start with that point. Um, this gives uh, an indication of some of what I think are the most important elements of, of industry labs. I'll start with maybe the, the easiest to understand, ND research cores. If you look at uh, this, there are about 20 of what we call research cores on campus right now, okay? Uh, these are facilities and personnel associated with those facilities who, pro who provide equipment or expertise in a particular area. For example, we have an engineering and design core. We have an imaging core. We have a nanofabrication uh, core. Uh, as I said, there's about 20 of these. These are mainly inward facing. Okay. They do some uh, work for, uh, uh, for uh, entities outside of Notre Dame, but for the most part, they're inward facing in the sense that if I come in with a, with a grant from the National Science Foundation or from the Department of Defense and I need an imaging capability, I don't want to have to you know, develop that myself. There's an imaging core on campus that I can use. If I want to uh, design a chip, uh, there, are, there are cores on campus that, that allow me to do that. Um, so part of the easiest to understand element of this is that we're going to expand those cores in a way that meets uh, uh, local needs, uh, expand the, the, the resources we've dedicated to them, and make them more available to, to uh, market them and make them more available to uh, uh, entities outside of Notre Dame, to make those resources available uh, more broadly. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, in terms of what we already have at Notre Dame, many of you uh, may be familiar with the Idea Center and its services. Okay, those are geared primarily in the uh, startup and spin-off space. Um, the Idea Center is not part of uh, Industry Lab, but certainly they are partners with us. Uh, and we want to make sure that we leverage one another's capabilities. Uh, within that, uh, when we start thinking in terms of uh, uh, new facilities being developed, I'm going to mention three right now. Uh, three facilities uh, that will have uh, specialized equipment, will have personnel associated with the facilities. One is the Engineering Innovation Hub, which is dedicated to manufacturing. Uh, another is Advanced Analytics and Technology, uh, which is dedicated to uh, uh, data, uh, machine learning, um, uh, artificial intelligence, that space, and then finally the Health Tech Innovation Lab. So these are going to be new, uh, outward facing, and 
with an inward facing uh, uh, element as well. These are going to be uh, entities that will both uh, provide services and capabilities within the Notre Dame uh, environment, but also will provide services uh, outside of the Notre Dame environment. Okay. Um, beyond that, uh, we've also got, uh, uh, it has been mentioned, industry, the industry advancement uh, services. The, the, the analogy I like to use here is sort of a, a matchmaking analogy. The goal of industry advancement services is to identify needs in local industry and identify resources uh, within the Notre Dame and, and the larger lift network that can accommodate those, those needs, okay? Um, so this is going to be uh, a run by these engineers and residents or entrepreneurs and residents or executives and residents who will be familiar with the local community, who will be, uh, uh, many of them will come from the local community uh, and will uh, uh, provide insight into uh, helping us identify you know, what the needs are and where within this lift network, and in particular with regard to industry labs, where within Notre Dame can we help accommodate those needs. Um, uh, Capstone ND, as has been mentioned, uh, uh, this is sort of how Notre Dame will engage our, our, our most important resource in this effort. Okay? And our most important resource are our students. Okay? Uh, in engineering, every engineering student is required to take part in what we call a capstone design course during their senior year. We graduate about 450 engineers a year from Notre Dame. Okay? Uh, every one of those students is required because of our accreditation staff take part in a capstone design project. That is a project, it's called capstone because it sort of encompasses what the students have learned throughout the course of their career. It's supposed to be cumulative, all right? Right now, those capstone design projects are essentially in isolation. They're not associated with industry in any way, uh, but are in fact uh, 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 just sort of, if you want to call them sort of theoretical uh, uh, projects. The goal is part of industry labs is to engage those students with local industry to the benefit of both because we know that's great for our students okay we know it's great for them to be able to have that access to real world experiences we know that the students who thrive the students who do the best when they leave Notre Dame are the students who've had that kind of experience as students and we want to make sure that we want to give that, that we, we give some of that to our students now in terms of the labs in terms of clubs, things like that. We see industry labs and their engagement with your companies and with other companies in the area is another way of giving that to, to more of our students. In addition, there are internship possibilities, a variety of different ways where we see our students engaging with, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with local industry. So I think I've covered about everything in the, uh, in the uh, this slide. So let's go to the next one. Um, just where I'll drill down a little bit in terms of the, uh, the engineering innovation hub. I mentioned that this is the, the resource that we are, we're building that will focus on manufacturing. Um, about a month ago, I uh, had to call up the, uh, the university librarian, and I thought it was going to be a difficult conversation because I was going to have to tell her that we didn't want an engineering library anymore, that we were going to get rid of our engineering library and uh, uh, convert it and some additional space into a space dedicated to uh, advanced manufacturing. Um, fortunately, it turned out she was okay with that. Uh, it turned out that uh, you know we had a uh, an early retirement program in Notre Dame this past year, and a lot of uh, librarians retired, and they're sort of doing a, a retrenchment now back to the uh, central library. So they were actually okay to give up their. Uh, I think it was about. Uh, 5,000 square feet of space to an advanced manufacturing facility. So this is going to be on the main floor in the main building of, uh, of uh, Fitzpatrick Hall, uh, excuse me, the main engineering building in Notre Dame, which is Fitzpatrick Hall. Hall. The, the goal is to turn it into a marquee facility that will both be a state-of-the-art facility for, for, for engineering education and research, uh, but also sort of a, a point of visibility for advanced manufacturing. You know, the intent, if you've ever been at Stinson Remick, Stinson Remick on the Notre Dame campus, uh, some of you have, uh, maybe most of you have not, uh, it, it, that's where we have our clean room. That's where we have our nanofabrication facility. 
And if you go in that, uh, the building, in the atrium, there's this huge window into a clean room, and it's really, it's really impressive, okay? It's not only a beautiful uh, uh, you know, path flight facility, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's impressive. And we want to do the same thing with advanced manufacturing in this facility. Um, again, ultimately we're talking about uh, uh, phase one is going to be about 10,000 square feet. Ultimately, uh, the whole facility, the entire uh, engineering innovation hub is going to be about uh, uh, twice that. Um, the plan, uh, I think the library is moving out next week. Uh, so we're going to start tearing down walls and uh, the, the goal is to have this complete by the end of the academic year. Uh, a variety of uh, some of the equipment that we intend to bring into that, and this is part of a broader uh, maker ecosystem uh, that really transcends just manufacturing and includes things like our nanotechnology center, uh, we've got a, a materials fabrication and a materials characterization laboratory. The goal is to uh, uh, provide sort of a broader uh, hands-on experience for our students and a set of resources with which we can engage the local industry. Okay. In terms of a timeline, uh, the announcement was made uh, back in April, uh, and uh, uh, we've been uh, working hard to try to, set, to, to, to get this off the ground since then. Um, establish and pilot the industry diagnostic tool. Again, this goes to the industry uh, advancement function. Again, the idea is to identify companies where we can be of use, where we can with whom it makes sense for us to partner uh, and, and to figure out how best to do that. Okay? Um, regional asset mapping. Yeah, I, I mentioned we already have 20 cores. Uh, throughout the Lyft network, there are a variety of different assets that we want to bring to bear on this, uh, on this project. And there's not one place to go to get information about all of that. So we want to make sure we can, we can do that. Um, in terms of, uh, uh, we want to pilot some of these programs. We're, going to, we're planning to do a spring uh, capstone, uh, industry-affiliated capstone uh, course, uh, spring of 2020. Uh, as I mentioned, we're already doing some building. Uh, we're, we're planning some workshops. Uh, that should get us through year one, okay? And then year two, uh, we want to start scaling this industry advancement services. This idea of, you know, has been mentioned, there's hundreds of local companies hundreds of local manufacturing companies. Where does it make sense for us to engage? Where can we be of the most benefit? Who, who does it make sense to, to partner with? And how can we, how can uh, our facilities and our uh, uh, expertise be of some benefit? Um, to implement the capstone and internship platforms. Uh, and then finally, you know, ultimately the goal is to uh, create a self-sustaining entity that will enable uh, commercializing the technology from those from those kinds of engagements. Uh, again, it's a five-year grant, okay, but one of the things that I've been impressed with from the beginning uh, by, the, by the Notre Dame folks who are sort of on the money end of this is the plan has been to uh, make it sustainable from day one in the sense that there's a plan in place to create an endowment that will allow certain functions to be carried out after, uh, after year five the goal is not to just do something and then walk away from it. It is, it is a commitment. I mean, I think that we know at Notre Dame that uh, part and parcel of, of, of us achieving our ambitions is for us to be part of a community uh, that, that realizes its ambitions, okay? And we were, there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement. Uh, those of us who are involved with this see this as really a once, literally a once-in-a-career opportunity. We will look forward to working with all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you.